everyone, this is Jason with Inkspit Designs. I know, I know it's been forever since I have made any kind of tutorials or done any video. Uh, we've been super busy with uh, lots of other projects. So it's nice to be back here making another tutorial for you. I've gotten a lot of emails, a lot of comments on my YouTube channel about uh, people asking, okay, so I have a, a picture or a design or some kind of a, an image, an image file, a JPEG or a PNG, something like that. How do I make it a vector graphic so that I can work on it, so that I can manipulate it, change it, do whatever I want with it? And I actually had a, a person uh, email me saying they had an order coming up for this image that you're seeing here on the screen. They wanted to make this a vector uh, gra or a design for somebody, cut it out of, of vinyl, and uh, they didn't understand how to do it. And they're asking me if I could, if they could pay me to make a tutorial or a video or something for them. And I said at that time I was book solid on stuff I was working on. I didn't have time but I could uh, really quickly convert it into a, a vector object for them. Um, and they, they paid me for that, and I told them, I, I promised them that I would make a, a video at some point explaining how to do it so they could do it for themselves in the future. And so here we are today uh, doing that with their, their exact image. Um, so shout out to them. Uh, their nickname is Little Bit. That's how they emailed me. So uh, this, this video is for you, and hopefully everybody else it will, it will help as well. So we got this image here. It's just a normal JPEG file. We've dragged it into our artboard. Um, nothing else special. And all we're going to do here, you can do this by several uh, several different ways. We're going to use the image trace function. Now, I believe this was introduced in CS6, maybe a little bit earlier, but in, CS, in version CS6 of Illustrator, it was called uh, Live Trace. And then they just changed the name to Image Trace uh, recently. So there's a panel that goes along with this but if you're looking up here at the top we have the image selected and we're coming up here and you see where it says embed edit original and image trace um, you can just click on this and get results um, there's lots of different options that you can can do in this let's bring up the, the palette under window here and uh, image trace and there's some different options here different shortcuts at the top that will get you uh, different looks basically uh, grayscale looks if you want it to be just a, a grayscale image if you want colors there's and this thing is pretty awesome I mean it can do some pretty amazing things um, you can pull a full-blown color picture in here and, and turn it into a vector so just right off the bat if I um, pull down this this pull down uh, arrow next to image trace you can see the different options high fidelity photo low fidelity photo this is what you'd use if you had a full color photo with people and all kinds of you know thousands and tons of colors and everything. You've got three colors if you want something just three colors, six colors, 16 colors. Um, silhouettes, which I use a lot when you're trying to make a, a vector a graphic, turn it into like a silhouette shape. You see a lot of those. So right off the bat here, let's just um, let's just use default. And what you're going to see immediately is it, it pretty quickly turns it into uh, a vector graphic. And I should say, you'll see as we're going through some of these options, it, this is very processor in, intensive, so hopefully you have a, a fairly beefy computer. I'm using a quad-core computer right now with about 24 gigs of, gigs of RAM. It will use a lot of RAM. Um, it will still work, but it will just take a lot longer. If we uh, if we go back here, we choose something like a high fidelity photo. You'll see here it brings up a dialog, and it takes a little bit longer um, to go through and do it. And it might even freeze your Illustrator for a second. So. There we go. It doesn't look any different, but what you need to do after that, all you do after choosing uh, the image trace is go to expand, and voila, you can see all the different shapes. Now, we chose to do it this complex way, so now if I ungroup everything, if we look in our outline mode, you'll see tons of different lines. This is very sloppy, not going to work good for what we want to do. So let's back on out of here. Um, go back to uh, before we, we rendered it as a vector object. And I'll show you what mode I used. I just used the default mode, actually. So it's still a picture. You can see here we click on it. We can't get any any lines or any shapes. All we're going to do... Let me back up once more. All we're going to do is click the default mode. And that's going to turn into a black and white here. And it looks like it's still... Don't be fooled, because it looks like it's still just a, a JPEG. We can't click on it or anything. But if we right-click and we... Or actually, we go up here to the top, I should say, where it says has this expand button we want to convert it into uh, object pass as it says there and there we go now remember it's all grouped together so if we right click and we choose ungroup then we select we can select different parts of it if I don't want this square that's on the outside we can do that um, now I can select each individual part of it and do whatever I want with it for instance um, say it doesn't get it exactly right now now I should say also 
off the top, you can just go in here and we'll go with the pen tool and start, you know, tracing things, start making shapes. You can, uh, you know, create curves and, and do your hand at that. Try to create shapes, but you know, you quickly realize how long that's going to take. So even if it doesn't get it perfect when you do this image trace, you can go in and clean up afterwards. For instance, if we zoom on here on these eyes, we can see that uh, there's corners in there. So you can just, just you know do whatever you think looks good. But we can just I might just uh, delete that and grab the pen tool and just try to make a a shape that's a little bit more reminiscent of what it originally looked like. Okay, so there's left ones before, right ones after. <clears throat> it is a whole lot easier to go in and clean up afterwards. Uh, but this actually did a pretty good job. There was very minimal cleanup that I had to do um, when I sent this graphic to uh, to this person that ordered it. So that will save you a bunch of time. Um, go ahead and mess around with, uh, if I just get rid of this, I bring the graphic back in, the original picture. And it goes without saying that the higher resolution image that you have, if you can get a high resolution image from somebody, it's going to do it a whole lot better. Because as you see, um, it's a little bit blurry here, These the letters. Um, are, are quite um, fuzzy on some of the edges, but it still does a pretty good job. So if you have a high resolution image, it's going to look a lot better. It's going to be a lot more accurate. Um, but if we go in here, uh, you just go in and mess around with the all the res you know the different options and everything, even this outline mode. Um, if you need outlines for some reason, that will give you just the outlines there. So. There is so many different options in here. I won't bore you by going through them all, but if you just know where to look, go to the window in the image trace panel and click on the JPEG, you can do that. Let me just show you before we, we close here. Um, I have an image here. Back up a little This is me and some of my friends uh, out mountain biking in Utah. And this, as you can see, is a full, full uh, range color image. If we just click... Uh, Let's choose the high fidelity photo mode and it will take a second here because it's creating a lot of vector paths, a lot of uh, a lot of shapes and things and it will it will chew on that for a little bit. might even cause your illustrator to look a little funny like mine's looking here, but eventually it should come back. And as you see, and it doesn't look like that photo that you had, but it did a pretty good job of taking all of the, and, and this is completely edible now. So if we go to expand, it will take a second too because there's just tons of paths. As you can see over in the panel, it tells us there's 11,000 paths, uh, 760, or I'm sorry, 76,000 anchors, which is crazy, 100 and, uh, or 10,000 colors as well, roughly. So it's working on a lot of data. Um, there they all are. You know, if you look at an outline mode, there, there it is. But just to give you an idea, this is nothing that's going to be cuttable with your your vinyl. But if you ever have a need to and to do something like this, now this since it is, excuse me, since it is a vector, we can scale it up as big as we want, which we can't do with the image beforehand. It starts looking pixelated when we do that. So that's one of the other advantages. All right. So I hope you guys have some fun uh, taking your images and creating. Uh, Turn them into vectors. It's a great way to do it, and then you can uh, can go from there. This has been Jason with Inkspit Designs, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.